Hi, I'm Jimmy Hodges, the captain with the Indianapolis Fire Department that serves on our apparatus spec committees. And this is our new Ladder 35. It's a 100-foot mid-mount platform. It's going to replace a 2005 Pierce that's also a mid-mount platform that's been in service for 17 years. It's got a six-person cab, four air pack seats in the back, EMS compartment in the back, tool mounting. Under that cowls, the Cummins X-15 engine, 605 horsepower. That's the biggest over-the-road truck engine that Cummins makes. You're not going to see them as we walk down the truck very good, but it's got 13-inch galvanized frame rails. It's got a 50-year warranty on those frame rails. I want to point to this patch here real quick. This was designed by the firefighters of Station 35 as a tribute to the USS Indianapolis, a carrier that was sunk by a Japanese submarine July 30th of 1945. Most of our ladder trucks on the Indianapolis Fire Department are rear mounts. This here is one of our mid mounts. Uh, the rear mount trucks have a transverse compartment in place of the pump panel. We don't put pumps on our ladder trucks. We have a few that are still in the fleet, but uh, normally there's a transverse compartment here, and with the mid-mount configuration, we couldn't go with a full-size transverse compartment. Instead, we have two smaller transverse compartments that can go all the way through. There's a third one in the back I'll get to in a minute. As we're looking down the truck, we have six jacks. The two in the front and the two in the rear sit right where they're at. Only this one is an outrigger. All of the jack pads are not stored under the truck. They're welded to the jacks so we don't stow them. This one here has a pretty big footprint, but we can turn it 90 degrees to fit it between two cars. We can also short jack either side and then only work off the short jack side. Looking up the ladder, it's a 100 foot ladder. The waterway is not underneath the ladder like most of our other ladder trucks. It's mounted off to the side. Makes it real easy to visualize. Um, that way it's not coming in contact with any objects as we're setting it up. There's two compartments up on the bed section of the ladder. One is designed for a saw and one is designed for the bracketry that holds the Stokes basket. Stokes basket is on the other side of the ladder. There's a hook mounted up on the fly section of the ladder. There's also a 10-foot roof ladder mounted up there. That 10-foot roof ladder has hooks and feet on both ends, so it can be used in either direction. You're not going to have to spin that ladder when you're working off the stick up there. Dual rear axles that can interlock so we can put power to all four rear wheels. This is the engineer's compartment here where they store the gear. We have a tool board in this one. Uh, allows for some tool mounting behind whatever we set in the compartment. This one has a shelf that's movable. We have um, storage for air bottles on all sides of the rear axles. A rollout compartment here for rescue tools or what other heavy objects like a fan. Saw storage also has the um, tool boarding in the back where we can mount things. Pull out compartment here with a pegboard set up for good tool storage. We have chamfered corners in the back. This has a lot less tail swing than the other mid-mount ladders that are in our fleet. Back here we have 183 feet of ground ladders. All of them are mounted on the beam so we can quickly pull them off the truck. Once you pull out a flat mounted ladder, you're gonna to have to spin it. These are set up ready to go, ready to put, be put to work. We have a 6,000 kilowatt Harrison hydraulic generator. Walking around is the rest of the compartments. We can store tools. Again, a slide out compartment for our heavier components. 
Moving the shelving in all of the compartments. This one here is also the transverse compartment that can hold long tools like hooks or whatever we want to put in there. Again, flexible tool mounting here. There is a shelf we can move down depending on what we want to stow in this compartment. This is the generator's cord rail. Comes off this side here. That lights up when, we, when it's got power going to it so we know whether it's got power or not. Small compartment here with our cab controls where we can keep cans or other things in this compartment here. It's got a pretty small pedestal on the turntable there where the operator will stand. When the, right now the pedestal is in the active position. When it's stored, it's down in this lower position. When it's in the active position, whoever's operating or keeping an eye on the aerial device, it's almost impossible to fall off that with the, the way the um, railings are built and the way the pedestal moves forward. This is the other side of our transverse compartment in the front. Again, it does not have a pump on this truck, but we have a waterway inlet on each side, five inch connection. There's a fog nozzle and a smooth bore nozzle on the tip of the ladder. Both of those are capable of flowing 2,000 gallons a minute. We've yet to mount our radio as well as our a uh, computer that we use to communicate with dispatch, but there's plenty of room to put it up there on the dash. <laughs> Typically at the Indianapolis Fire Department, we mount hooks on the front bumper. The way this is configured with the front jacks didn't really allow for that, but as we went back, three different transverse compartments will allow us to store those long pieces of equipment, as well as the Federal Q siren is up off the front bumper, just the way we had to be configured. Two-piece windshield for the Aero XT. It's got brow light front, side, and over the box. Those are FireTech lights with a lifetime warranty. Once again, I'm Jimmy Hodges, captain with the Indianapolis Fire Department. Thanks for watching. We're here in Lucas Oil Stadium, home of the Indianapolis Colts.